Welcome to another starter video. My name is Stefan Eriksson and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how to conduct an instrumental variable regression in starter. So first you may ask yourself, when are we going to use this and why? Well suppose you're in a case where you suspect, or you know even, that one of your regressors are endogenous. That is, one of your independent variables are acting a little um, badly, right? So what we can do here is to use a so-called two-stage least square approach. There are GMM estimators out there, and there's also LIMO. However, we only focus on the two SLS today. So if you want to do the others, maybe for some other video, okay? So for today's example data set, we can use web use and download that straight away. Then we can go through the example data set before we go to the command. Please note, I've already set up my entire do file just as usual. Nothing new under the sun, so that should also be familiar to you if you've been on my channel before. So let's go and take a look at the data set itself, shall we? So we have here in wages, union, education, mother and father education. And for this example, what we're interested in is seeing the effect of union membership and education on your annual salary, all in US dollars here. And what we suspect here is that education is a little endogenous perhaps. So what we wanna do here is we wanna instrument it with mother and father's education such that we can proxy them. But the term instrument it sounds a little better, doesn't it now? So that's what we want to do here. And of course, you could think about this as being, you know, uh, either for omitted variable bias reasons, it could be for reverse causality or even a measurement error. Regardless, we can use this method to in order to get around this issue. So what we want to do here is that we want to go and type the following as data to use the built-in IV regress command. It is fortunately quite simple to use, but let's go it step for step. So first, we have our outcome variable still. Or rather, we need to actually specify, of course, that it's two states least squares. Let's not forget that. And then, of course, wages union. And then you may think, this goes a little too easy. Yeah, now comes the, the little trick with it, right? We have to here specify what is going on behind the scene in the first stage. So wages is our ultimate outcome variable that we have. We want to look at union membership. That one is fine. But then we suspect that education is endogenous itself. So we want to specify what we're going to proxy that with, say, or instrument it with. So in the first stage, we want to regress education, education on mother's education, education, and father's education, education in this case here. And that should provide us exactly with what we need. We will see already for the outcome here, the start already performed, it's super quick and everything, right? So what do we observe? We observe here that each additional year of education gives you almost a thousand dollars extra in annual salary. Nice, but even better if you're part of a union that is almost 2000. So I need to go and sign up as quick as humanly possible, it seems. But now we have two things we want to check. We cannot just stuff any instrument there in there. So there are a few things that we need to do. First, we need to see if the instruments themselves are strong enough. Some also call this should be a strong first stage. That is indeed, we should find some strength in correlation at least between mother's education, father's education and the education that they're trying to instrument. Second, they should not suffer from the same problem that we're trying to fix. In other words, they shouldn't be endogenous themselves. And fortunately, there are easy ways to test this via some post estimation command which is known as eStat. And in this particular case, we want to write in dog, right? Like a little dog, right? Woof, woof. So in dog, and what do we get? We here test for whether it's endogenous itself. We see here there's a neural hypothesis that this is exogenous. We strongly reject it. So basically what we're saying here is we are perfectly okay treating education as endogenous. That is that otherwise we could just run OLS anyway, because remember, if we run OLS in this case here, we not only get biased estimates, but they also become inconsistent. You're not saved here by a large sample or anything of that sort. So in other words, endogeneity or be something being endogenous is really bad, right? So we wanna fix it. So in this particular case, good news, what we're doing here is fine. It's a, it's a good way to fix it essentially, or rather that these instruments themselves, they don't suffer from the same problem we're trying to fix. Okay, that's number one. What about number two? And here we could use an eStat command again. And here we just write first stage. That will give us some nice statistics coming from the first stage regression. 
such that we can see in this case, are they say strong enough? And what we will quickly do here is to say, okay, look, the R squared, a partial one, 0, 76, rounded, of course. That seems okay, nothing insane, but still quite strong. But even better, we come to the rule of thumb that you may have heard before. That is that the F statistic from the first stage, in this case, this one here, should be above 10. I look at something that's above 1500, so that's perfectly fine. But let me give a little word of caution here. Just because it above 10 is above 10 doesn't mean you're completely out of the woods. If it's just a little above 10 or even 20 or something like that, you may still get a hard time from a review or even your teacher. So it has to be convincingly large. Because remember, if you have weak instruments, you cannot just shove more instruments in there and think you're saved. No, that can actually do more harm than good. And then you're better off pursuing an estimation method such as limited information maximum likelihood. Sounds so cool when you say it like that. Just call it LIML for short. So that is what you would actually have to check here. If those two conditions that we checked here are fine, you seem to be in the clear, in terms of estimation at least. What we can also do, we can also at the same time run a little Sagan test. Now what does the Sagan test do? Again, ESTAT over ID. But what we're testing here is for over-identifying restriction, that is that the model is correctly identified. So what we have here is a null hypothesis that is unfortunately not directly written here. So looking at my cheat sheet here, we see that it, the instrument set is valid and that you have specified the model correctly under the null hypothesis. With a p-value that is quite large, we're not rejecting this. So we are also okay when it comes to that. That's not too bad, is it now? And with that, we could also finish the video here, but I have a little extra treat for you. Because sometimes you may, for whatever reason, you want to estimate this manually. And similar to what I said in the Heckman two-stage model, I recommend that you use the built-in command because it also adjusts your standard errors. Because this is the problem we run into if we do this manually. We get the problem that you don't correct for the sampling, or rather also you don't correct for the generated regressor that you include in the second model, or the second stage, sorry. And one way, another way to go about it a little more elaborately is to run or write more of a bootstrap uh, program. So that's what you can do. But in short, if you just want to do it crude and get somewhat close, you can just simply write the following. We want to do the first stage, that is regress education. In this case, on mother's education, mid-education, and father's education, that is actually all we would have to do. We would then predict the value here, the predicted value of education. We're going to call it education hat, hat for the estimated here. And then we can write up the second stage model also as a regress command. That would be wages. It would be union on this education hat that we just made. And we can add in robust standard errors. Warning again, guys, this doesn't really solve the issue so we get close but no cigar so to speak so a bootstrap command written around this here will be a better solution but it's a little more involved maybe for a future video running it here scrolling it up what you can also see you can also see the direct f statistic here you already see now that it's close to what we had before also 1500 something but it's not quite the same but good enough in this case here we also see indeed that these instruments are rather strong. They're very good instruments or proxies or whatever you want to call them. And with that said, that I think is all I want to show you for today's video. And I hope you learned something here today in this class here. And I hope to see you back for another class in Stefan's classroom. Until next time. Bye bye. <laughs>